It's it's un, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. He's here and everything is is really happening. The uh, the English fan clubs have been the response has been tremendous, just tremendous. You know, we we did this this show uh, here in England, uh, in the UK. I, I think it was ninety eight. Yeah. And at that time, the thing that really surprises me, and I, at that time, maybe ten or twelve percent of the audience was under under thirty five years old. Yeah. And today we're out there, almost 70% of the audience is under 35 years old. Well, it's just a testament, isn't it, to the popularity, the ever-going and ongoing popularity of Elvis Presley. Now, you work with the King on a lot of his shows between 1970, right to the very end, to his last gig. I mean, were, right. you, were you a fan before you got involved with Elvis? Never. You weren't a fan? No, I was not. My wife was a, was a total fan, you know. No, I was in an acoustic world, and the Elvis Presley I knew had a four-piece band. Mm. You know, and uh, that was not where I was coming from. Uh, but then uh, when I really got to meet him, uh, when the colonel hired me, to, to when he got, well, I started using a large orchestra, the colonel hired me. And uh, I, I don't know, I, we, I, when I first met him, the charisma was unbelievable. He sends off, he sends off something I can't really ex- explain. You know, if we work an 18,000-seater, his his feeling goes all the way to the back row, yeah. Up in a up in a balcony, and it just was, it it's a whole other it's a whole other kind of thing. And then once he had the orchestra, you know, I never realized he was a, he liked opera music. He was a Mario Lanza fan, and uh, so suddenly he, he was in a whole other world as far as I was concerned. I had a large orchestra and Elvis Presley. Okay, so you just mentioned then that you weren't a fan before you got involved. So it was that were you approached by the Colonel were you to to do this? That's right. The Colonel and the and the Hilton people. And what, what at first, what did you think? Did you just think to yourself, "Oh no, not Elvis"? Or was it something that you were keen to get involved in? Well, it, it was a, it was a gig with someone that was very popular. Yeah. I mean, it, that was was it, you know? Because my my wife, my you know, her sisters, everybody was just totally Elvis. You know, up the wall, everything was Elvis, Elvis, Elvis. Now, it's actually an anniversary just passed because there was a lot of TV shows over here in the UK about Elvis being in Vegas and a lot of the stuff that he got up to and and about all the concerts. So I I was watching that myself a couple of weeks ago and that was the one thing that came across what you just mentioned then about the King. He seemed such a really, with all the success that he'd had, he seemed such a down-to-earth, really nice, genuine guy. No, he was was really a down-home guy, all the way down home. And the respect he gave the people who worked on stage with him was was it was just phenomenal. Really, he appreciated what everybody did musically. I got a frog in my throat, but that's okay. That's okay. Did this show? It works because the energy is the same. Yeah. You know, it's 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 him. It said everybody says who does Elvis? Elvis is Elvis. There's no, no because nobody can get the vibe over there like like Elvis can. And with the, with the sweets and and the and the. Uh, the Imperials, and all in the the original rhythm section, it just it just shouts. Yeah, it shouts. We've been we, we've been getting standing ovations every night. Because it's quite a unique thing, isn't it? Obviously, you guys are playing the music live, and you've got Elvis on the screen. It must that, be a bit that, of a surreal experience for you. If you know what I mean, Joe? Yeah, it's the same vibe as it used to be. You know, the vibe is not different. Okay, so some of the things that you... Because you were involved with Elvis for quite some time between 1970 and 77. Now, I believe you're the guy that suggested about him coming on to a Space Odyssey as the theme tune at the start you of the gigs. You know, it was, it was my wife's idea. Oh. Yeah, we and were... you take the credit for it now. Huh? You're, according to this, you've got the credit for it, so we need to get that corrected, don't we, on these websites that it was your wife? Yeah, well, well, it, it was my wife, and then I took it to him. But we we were rehearsing. Uh, we, we just usually did a three day band rehearsal. Yeah. Before he opened in Vegas, and uh, after the first rehearsal, she met me for for dinner. We we're going to eat the Hilton and then run see Space Odyssey because I never saw it. It was it was in one of those panorama theaters that was happening in the early seventies. Yeah. And uh, we were sitting there watching a the movie, and this music came on. She says, "Don't you get a f- feeling Elvis is about to enter?" I said, "Oh my God, what a great idea!" I went back and talked to him about it, and he said, uh, "Oh yeah, he he loved it. He was familiar with it." And he said, "Let's play the record." I said, "No, let's do it with the orchestra." So we we did it with the orchestra, but it was it was Corky who said, "Don't you get a feeling that Elvis is about to walk on?" And that's that's how it all started. What for you, Joe, is your standout? Because there must be so many memories, so many moments. But what is the the one 
memory, the one moment for you, which is your favourite Elvis story. You know what what, what involved you and your favourite. If it, someone say to you, t- t- tell me a, a great story about Elvis. What is it for you? Because you must get asked this all the I time. Think I think it's got to be about the <clears throat> the second day after I worked with him. We did the first show, and you know he would do what he wanted to do. We'd have a lineup on stage. Yeah, I'm sitting back there with a 35 piece orchestra. And he would just change the line. He'd turn to those guys and say, let's do Bridge Over Troubled Water. Well, I'm ready to go do, uh, you know, a whole other thing yeah. back there. And, and uh, <clears throat> after, the, after the, the, the show that night, somebody in his group says, well, how do you like working with Elvis? And I said, it's like a marble rolling down concrete steps. <laughs> well, I came to work the next night. My door is hard to open in my dressing room, small dressing room. And I get it open. There's marbles all over the floor. There are marbles in the sink. There are marbles in all my my pockets. The the clothes that were hanging, and and written on the on the mirror and soap is, follow the marble EP. <laughs> <laughs> what a great story that is! That's oh, unbelievable. It, and a lot of the fans we get into different towns these days, they just send marbles. <laughs> it's become a you trademark. Know? Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> so you were with the King for his final concert as well, weren't you? Right, right. What what right. what was that? Was there anything memorable memorable about that? Not really. You know, I don't remember that last concert that much. The things I really remember was Madison Square Garden. You know, there were so many flash bulbs went off that the garden was lit. There were times when it was lit for a second or two seconds. I mean, like they turned the lights on. And you know, in those in the in the early seventies, you had they had flash bulbs and cameras, not just the flash. Yeah. But they were flash bulbs. It was just that the night he did Dixie and Atlanta, and uh, the the thing, the uh, the satellite show was 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 just overpowering. I said to the orchestra when, before we started, I said this is the first time anything is going to go around the entire world. You know, I was very lucky to be able to conduct the first concert that yeah. was ever done on satellite. Some of you know, there's there was so many firsts. Can you remember uh, your last conversation? That one of the last things that you actually said to Elvis, what the, the last contact you had with him? Yeah, we were uh, the last contact I had when basically we were talking about the CBS special. You know, that was uh, we did we did that in somewhere in the Midwest. I think it was Des Moines. That was that was the uh, you know what, what'll do this, what'll do that, trilogy do this, trilogy don't do that. And, we talked a little bit before, though, sorry, Joe, about uh, you know Elvis being such a nice guy, and you mentioned that was the colonel that you got, got you involved in. And what, what was the colonel like to work for? Because he seemed a very, from the documentaries that I saw not so long ago on the BBC, he seemed a very sort of focused and, you know, it was my, my, my way or the highway type person. Yeah, yeah, well, I can tell you, I don't know about everybody else's experience with him, but on his 85th birthday, I gave him a plaque for his desk that says, Colonel, thanks for the education. Because he gave me an education. So he was a good guy then in your eyes. Uh, to me, I never had a problem with the girl, uh, you know. But but he he would he just did things that nobody did. Uh, who's going to think about going taking a satellite? I don't think. I think without the colonel, there wouldn't have been been any Elvis Presley. No, well, I think that the Yin and Yang weren't they? They were they, they were sort of in a way a double act, which still to this day is talked about and, and lives on. Okay, well, Joe, thank you so much for coming on the show. Okay, thank you. Take care, Joe. All the best. Thank you, man. Bye bye.